All right, so I want to talk about intrinsic versus extrinsic motivation. I've been listening to a lot of Andrew Huberman's podcast and the stuff he said about one specific episode, I think that's name is something like hard work and motivation, drive, drive and motivation or something like that. And in one particular section, he talks about intrinsic versus extrinsic motivation. And he uses this uh, experiment involving children where children were intrinsically motivated, meaning that they, they just enjoyed drawing. You know, they didn't need some, something to motivate them to draw like, oh, you're going to get a reward if you draw. They just enjoyed to draw. This was like a kindergarten and they all enjoy drawing and whatever. And then the teacher or whatever, or some instructor person decided to start rewarding the children for like a few, few weeks or something for every time they drew something. And that continued on until some point they stopped giving the rewards. And then the kids, some, if not most, I don't think all started to stop drawing. They just didn't like the drawing anymore, which is very interesting. Yeah, that just goes to show that as soon as you externalize motivation for something, then it becomes it becomes dependent on external things, you know, which is kind of scary if you think about it. So, and it's kind of like why I've stopped doing YouTube so many times if I think about it. Like when I do YouTube, it's like, yeah, cool. I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to start my YouTube thing off and it's going to be fucking amazing, you know? And then I post some videos and I, after the 10th video I've posted, goes absolutely nowhere just gets like a one view one or two views then you learn that yeah maybe the reward's not coming the gold star if you look at the analytics your gold star is not there it's not it's not looking at you back and the thing is if you want to grow on youtube you need to really be consistent for a really long time and that's something that i've actually learned but i keep forgetting because i've made over like at the time of you watching this video i've uh, made 321 videos as of the making of this one that's not very consistent because the channel is almost 10 years old now and i only have 5,000. 480 something subscribers so it's like yeah you can't make a living off that but like all the guys that you look at on youtube that have been really successful like pewdiepie and casey neistat i mean mkbhd he's like the poster child and a lot of these guys either they have one or two things they're really consistent in terms of they upload every day like at the height of pewdiepie's career this man was uploading once or twice a day i think he, there's actually a few years where he was uploading twice a day now granted he wasn't editing much he was uploading twice a day which is like fuck tons of footage that's like 20 minutes of watchable content every day which is fucking insane if you think about it and if you look at Casey Neistat and PewDiePie right these are the two guys I idolize a lot on YouTube if you go to their views or, or the amount of videos that they've posted I think Casey Neistat first off has posted over 1,000 videos and 800 of those were daily vlogs which is like insane if you think about it if you go to PewDiePie this man has posted over 4.6 thousand videos that's like insane like that's more than there are days between the time that his channel started and now so he did upload like more than once for quite a long time to get to that point. It goes to show that consistency is quite a big part of it, but granted, you have guys like uh, Mr. Beast, who has like, oh, he could totally rigged the algorithm and everything. He posts like extremely high quality videos with like huge budgets and they go extremely viral because that's kind of like what the algorithm needs nowadays. But at the cost of authenticity, and there's a very good video by, by Internet Impact talking about like videos called why the Mr. Beast genre feels stale and boring. Like, yes, it's very successful just like a lot of Hollywood blockbuster movies, but it lacks authenticity. And I think they make the point in the video that guys like Casey Neistat have that authenticity factor. And, and it was totally everywhere on YouTube back in the day. If you look at stuff like the Vlog Brothers and Jenna Marbles and Niga Higa and all those guys, like those were really authentic pieces of content. And I really look up to guys like Vsauce as well. And he didn't post every day, he posted every week. And he doesn't do that anymore because I don't know, maybe he's just living off that as tense, but he probably has the most rewatch videos on YouTube. There's very rare times that I go and I watch some of PewDiePie's really old videos because just for nostalgia's sake, you know, but they were unedited, but they were still fun to watch because he was doing horror games. And the thing with horror, there's a lot of, um, a lot of the forbidden or the, a lot of the appeal for horror stuff with like Stephen King and horror movies in general is the uncanny. There's always some sense of uh, uncertainty and suspense in those videos because that was the height of PewDiePie's thing. Let's not just lie to each other. Like the reason that PewDiePie PewDiePie was on the top of his game was because he was playing horror games and as soon as he stopped playing horror games things just kind of st slowly started going slower but that was the big growth he had was totally playing horror games and I, I totally enjoyed watching the horror games the most it was really the most fun to watch and a lot of this stuff has to do with watch time but the thing with authenticity and that's also what's said in the internet impacts video the reason why authenticity is really important is because your audience becomes loyal and if Mr. Beast stops uploading for let's 
say a year and then he starts uploading i don't know just personal vlogs about his life no one's gonna watch it because no one cares about mr beast himself but if you take a guy like casey neistat he actually did stop uploading for like multiple years and then he did a like a big comeback and his videos they still get a million views each which is uh i don't know arguably better in a way it's more sustainable it's more reliable but i like the concept of consistency guys like vsauce were quite consistent even though they just uploaded once a week he still did daily work to make his videos there's a video on youtube about how vsauce made his videos he would research a topic for five days in a week and then spend the last two days of that week just editing that video and then he puts it online so it's still daily work but it has a better product at the end it's not impossible to make these kinds of videos if you look at like a casey neistat video and a vsauce thing that is something you could arguably make in a day if you really hustled and casey did really hustle but he didn't really need to do research for his videos he just kind of sort of made content out of his day the concept of consistency daily uploading or at least daily work taking into account stuff like suspense or creating a sense of expectation in your videos that really gets you the watch time and then the algorithm starts favoring whatever you do all very important things to think about these are things that are on my mind and i feel like being consistent myself for as long as i possibly can and we should probably try that Thanks for watching.